Greetings and welcome to another Hypeno Briefing. We will be examining BRICS today in order to examine growth, as Russia suggests adding 10 more partner nations. One of Russia's top priorities for the Kazan summit is creating methods for cooperation with British partner countries. Russia has proposed adding 10 partner countries to the BRICS organization, which may see further growth after it already had five full-time members. India has not yet stated how it feels about the idea. Although the partner countries' engagement methods are still being worked out, it is expected that they will take part in certain projects or initiatives rather than voting on decisions. BRICS became a 10-member organization on January 1st, with the addition of Egypt, Ethiopia, Aran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Block. But Argentina has backed out of its intentions to join. Russia seeks to establish a coalition of partner nations. Out of the 33 nations that have submitted applications to join BRICS, each nation has been required to provide a list of 10. The partner countries could be the 10 common countries. That is the suggestion. We must decide whether or not to accept that call, a government representative stated, pleading for anonymity. A number of important nations eager to join BRICS include Venezuela, Cuba, Nigeria, Kenya, Pakistan, Turkey, Thailand, Malaysia, and Venezuela. India is against Pakistan joining BRICS because it thinks that the group will become skewed toward bilateral problems. Furthermore, India thinks that BRICS's composition as a consortium of developing market nations ought to be maintained. According to experts, a country's worldwide profile is elevated by being a member of BRICS, indicating its increasing significance and impact on world affairs. Emerging markets in developing nations showed great interest in joining BRICS, according to a joint statement released following the foreign ministers of the BRICS Nations Summit in Nizhny Novgorod, Russia, last month. They talked about the partner country concept in accordance with the Johannesburg IE Declarations paragraph 92. The joint statement further stated, they discussed the progress on the relevant preparations to be reported to the BRICS leaders by the XVI summit in Kazan, in October. BRICS countries assigned the foreign ministers of the Johannesburg Statement, which was made under South Africa's presidency in 2023, to further develop the BRICS partner country model, a list of potential partner countries, and, prior to the Russian summit, exchange a report. One of Russia's top goals for the Kazan summit is creating methods for contact with BRICS partner countries. The acronym gained popularity in 2001 when the Goldman Sachs report discussed the BRIC countries' resurgence as the world's economic leaders. In July 2006, the leaders of Brazil, Russia, India, and China convened informally outside the G8 Outreach Summit in St. Petersburg, Russia. This led to the official formation of the alliance that same year. June 2009 saw Russia host the inaugural BRICS Summit. 2010 saw South Africa receive an invitation to join BRICS. And in 2011, the country traveled to Sanya, China for the third BRICS conference. How will Malaysia gain from joining the BRICS? According to Asian Studies professor James Chin, the best approach to interpreting Malaysia's bid to join BRICS is as an extra platform to obtain a more significant international voice. Australia's AOBART, the announcement recently made by Malaysia that it is pursuing membership in the BRICS economic grouping created a great deal of enthusiasm throughout the foreign policy community. As the world shifts away from an international order led by the United States, BRICS, an intergovernmental organization made up of Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and, as of 2024, Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates, has gained a lot of interest. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASCN, and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC, served as the cornerstones of Malaysia's foreign policy for many years. A few pundits have said that since 1.6 million members of the BRICS group have investable assets of more than 1 million US dollars, joining the club will open up more economic opportunities for Malaysia. Will Malaysia undergo a major transformation as a result of joining the BRICS? What advantages does it have for Malaysia? The best approach to interpreting Malaysia's application to join BRICS is as an additional form for the country to prosper economically and establish a stronger international voice as a middle power. In recent years, there have been long-standing problems between ACN and the OIC. The OAC is the second largest organization after the UN and has 57 members. Before we continue, please kindly like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. Thanks, let's get going. Although it presents itself as the voice of the Muslim world as a whole, it is going through significant changes because of geostrategic shifts in the Middle East, like the 2020 Abraham Accords, which normalized relations between Israel and numerous Arab states, and reforms carried out by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the OAC has changed significantly, as evidenced by its recent inability to declare a single opinion on the Gaza crisis. In November of last year, Saudi Arabia played host to a special summit between the Arab League and the OAC on Gaza, but the participants were unable to reach an agreement on how to end the conflict. It may be viewed as a failure, save for the diluted proclamation that the fighting must halt and that humanitarian relief must be allowed into Gaza. The countries of ASEAN differ greatly in terms of the implications of China's rise for the area. ACN's disagreements are seen in the ongoing dispute over claims in the South China Sea, 
It follows that Malaysia's search for more global venues on which to promote its interest is not surprising. Furthermore, it is not too difficult to become a member of BRICS. The organization serves as a forum for discussions for close commercial and political agreement on global issues, as well as a loose coalition. Entering BRICS requires little domestic change because members do not need to amend any laws to comply with the organization, unlike, say, entering the European Union. South-South commerce or trade between members of the Global South is another important focus of BRICS, with China serving as the hub. Malaysia is already a part of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, which is led by China. Therefore, joining BRICS might be considered as a logical next step. However, joining RCEP does involve amending domestic laws. China's ascent has provided us a glimmer of optimism that there are checks and balances in the globe. Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim remarked of Chinese President Xi Jinping in a recent interview regarding joining BRICS. This statement is significant. The number of applicants shows the growing interest in BRICS. 34 nations have expressed interest in joining the group, according to a January article citing South Africa's Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Naledi Pandur. Vietnam and Thailand are probably certain to apply, while the Philippines seems interested. Furthermore, a larger stage is sought by all of these nations, including Malaysia, in part due to the fact that Indonesia, the most significant ASEAN nation, has just joined the group of 20 G20. Since Indonesia has a far broader platform than the other ASEAN nations, it is not surprising that they are also searching for a larger platform. It is evident that the BRICS countries, Brazil, India, South Africa, and China, are leading the group in attempting to create a new forum for the developing world. It is preferable to arrive early rather than later, in the sense that Ethiopia, Iran, Egypt, and the UAE joined at the beginning of 2024, Malaysia is already behind schedule. Remembering that the BRICS countries together make up one-third of the world's gross domestic product and roughly 45% of the world's population, there is a genuine chance that BRICS will evolve into a new G7, the club of wealthy nations, in the future. Malaysia, meanwhile, is in favor of a few of the main BRICS objectives. For instance, BRICS has consistently maintained that if nations can trade in currencies other than the US dollar, the world will be more stable. Malaysia feels that, in order to avoid using the US dollar in commerce, more trade should be done directly. It is likely that Malaysia is seeking to gain something from the BRICS Development Bank. The majority of Malaysia's foreign policy elite is in favor of Malaysia joining the BRICS. Over the previous eight months, many have been infuriated by the Gaza problem and enraged by the US and European backing of Israel. They believe that the Israeli force is still destroying Gaza with the help of the US and EU. Malaysian public opinion is firmly in favor of the Palestinians. Given that South Africa, China, and Russia are the three countries that criticize Israel the most over the Gaza conflict, the people of Malaysia would likely be quite supportive of Mr. Anwar's bid to join the BRICS. Is there a drawback to being a member of the BRICS? Opponents will contend that Malaysia's membership in BRICS will further lock in Malaysia's connection with China, allowing Beijing more power to influence Malaysia's foreign policy. But in actuality, Malaysia and the other ASEAN countries are unable to escape from the shadow of Beijing. In the three centuries that the region was ruled by European colonists, China has always been the dominant force in Southeast Asia. Malaysian elites have adopted the stance that they should engage China more than less, and that contact is necessary in any case. For the last 15 years, China has been Malaysia's principal trading partner, and there is no indication that this will change anytime soon. Since Malaysia is a participant in both the RCP and Mr. Tai's Belt and Road Initiative, joining BRICS will not fundamentally alter the landscape. Rather, it will bring new levels of cooperation. The US and its allies are likely to be the only ones irritated by Malaysia's application. The US regards the BRICS as basically an informal entity committed to displacing the West's hegemony in the international sphere. That is something Malaysia can live with.